the, um, the locations, um, and uh, we can offer some little insights into how different parts of the picture were made and, look, and uh, how those locations were chosen, or even little things like the fact that uh, Steve McQueen got a lot of advice on making his picture between Casey Tibbs and Ben Johnson. You'll see at certain times, um, Steve's wearing Ben Johnson's championship buckle from 1953. Ben had just won the Academy Award, but he's, one of, he's the only man ever to win an Academy Award and a world championship in rodeo. He was a Roman champion in 1953. But then, a uh, funny little thing is that uh, Casey Tibbs helped develop Wrangler jeans. He was a champion in 1949, and uh, Blue Bell jeans out of, out of North Carolina was developing a new, new type of jeans you remember uh, Levi's had open rivets on their jeans and uh, ruined a lot of saddles. And so they consulted with Casey Tibbs, but he's a little too wild for them in their advertising. So Jim Shoulders ended up getting a big contract to represent Wrangler jeans after Casey. And so Casey had a contract with Lee jeans. So if you watch closely, Steve McQueen wears Lee jeans in Junior Bonner, not Wranglers. That's just a little, small, little, fun little, uh, inside on the picture. Do we have any questions? Did Steve McQueen ride that bull or was that someone else? <laughs> uh, you know, Steve McQueen was well known for his daring, a lot like, you know, Tom Mix, who was one of the first champions of the Preston Rodeo. But um, he, uh, he did do the wild cow milking. He um, did do the scene and Bill can tell you a little bit about, more about the horse he was on. But you remember when he's going in to do the uh, saddle bronc riding, and that horse really, he spurred him accidentally. Oh. And uh, so that wasn't in the script. <laughs> that horse that actually was a, was a bucking horse, and uh, Chuck Shepard, uh, John Kikover's son-in-law, he took that horse and got him where you could ride him and he used him as a pickup horse when in all of the uh, rock riding and saddle bronc and bareback. And so they put that horse in and he just gentle as he could be until Steve Burke, uh, he spurred him. And <laughs> that horse remembered, I guess, that that's what he used to do. So that's, that's the story of that horse. Don't and, and so they, they uh, worked closely with the, um, with the key keffers on the stock and then with um, companies in Los Angeles that have trained horses or trained bulls. Um, Bill's got some good stories about, you know, Sunshine had a double, you know, and, and then at the opening of the picture, they had to bring in a set of eight Mexican fighting bulls because Sam would go out with with Mr. Kikaffer and Casey and Bill, and they wanted they'd have to they wanted to test some of these these bulls to get the right action for that opening, and none of the the cha the champion bulls and their these animals are used specifically just for bucking out. They're athletes themselves, and um, and they're used to you know getting in those shoots and riding their eight seconds, but they weren't giving Sam the action they wanted for that opening, so they had to bring in a series of bulls from California. And um, Bill can tell you what happened when the, his son in law got on the first bull. Loose wire. Anyway, um, they bucked out several uh, cowboys, volunteered to buck out on those Mexican fighting bulls, and they uh, recorded each one, and Sam picked the one that my daughter's boyfriend rode, and he was, had just turned 18, 140 pounds soaking wet. He got on that bull. He was a champion high school bull rider, so he, was, he actually entered the rodeo that year uh, on other bulls. And he did to, very stupidly did what's called a suicide route, and it's one that it's hard to get your hand loose. And so he hung on and that bull, because of the, his size, swung him around.